So, for example, look at the Dreamers, the DACA kids. Here's Obama. He passes his executive order for, for DACA, for the Dreamers. Then, so here's all the Dreamers thinking, oh, we get to stay. This is great. They start their lives, whatever. And then here comes President Trump, and he goes, no, not so fast. You may get sent back home. Now they're like, what? And now here comes Biden again, and I'm sure he's going to allow the Dreamers to stay. It's like this kind of whiplash is just, we need measured government. And this is the, the furthest thing from measured. The other thing is that this is definitely not something that you should be passing during a recession or a pandemic. Now, you might be thinking, Jay, we want to add... We want to add money to these people's wallets. Well, here's the problem with raising the minimum wage. You're going to you're going to reduce jobs when you raise the minimum wage. So the worst time to raise the minimum wage is during a recession with high unemployment. And then they just took a look at different countries and states that had mask mandates and their transmission rates. Transmission was 7.5 times higher in countries that did not have a mask mandate. Not 7% higher. 7.5 times higher. The difference between U.S. states with mask mandates and those without found that the daily growth rate was two percentage points lower in states with mask mandates estimating that the mandates had prevented 230,000 to 450,000 COVID-19 cases. The other thing is that it's not the job of the federal government, in my opinion, to set a minimum wage. If the states want to do it, then we debate it on a state level. But it should be debated on a state level and not a federal level because every state's economy is completely different. And I'm going to show you how raising the minimum wage will actually help some places as far as purchasing power, but it will hurt purchasing power in other places. So I don't believe this is the job of the federal government. They need to butt out. Let states handle their own wages. Why do you as a federal government need to be involved in that process? There's just no way in my mind that you should be involved. Tenth Amendment. Send it back to the states. Think about that. Out of 47,000 patients that were discharged from the hospital, 29% were readmitted within 140 days. And of those, 12.3% died. That's one in eight of recovered coronavirus patients die within five months in the United Kingdom. It's one of the things that I've been sharing with you is that we don't understand this virus yet. And so when we talk about, let's just let everybody get it. We'll just get herd immunity. Let's just sequester all of the high risk people. They can, they can shut down. They can, they can, you know, be in their homes and, and whatever and let everybody else just get it. We just don't know enough about this thing. 